Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back here at Divine the Pharmacist. Uh, today we are back again with exciting video, just a summary. I am with Abraham. Thank you. So what we look at today, basically we're going to look at uh, the summary version of the sliding scale. It's called patient individualized sliding scale. So this one we are going to do it in millimoles per liter and also in milligram per deciliter because some people post they commented that they wish to see the units so that they easily can see them in millimoles per liter. So we're going to uh, use both two scales in millimoles per liter and also milligrams per deciliter. So let's do together. Uh, basically, so this is basically the individualized insulin sliding scale. So last time I said that uh, with come to sliding scale, you can use two rules, okay? Two rules that are there to use. The first one I said is the 1800 rule, which is the most common one, and it's also called the 1500 rule. I said that this 1800 rule works best for what we call a rapid acting insulin, like it, act rapid, uh, sorry, not, not rapid, sorry, like um, uh, what we call Lispro, Aspart, Glucin, these are what we call rapid acting insulin. And they work best with what we call the 1800 rule. But the 1500 rule really works, we apply it to what we call short acting insulin, like examples of that we have got act rapid. So today I'll use the short acting insulin because these insulins are the most commonly uh, abundant in our country and in Africa. So, they are, so I'll use the 1500 rule. So what we say basically is to come with the insulin sensitivity test for the patient, which we say the uh, insulin sensitivity test is equal to, you divide the 1500, in this case I'm using this one because I said that this is the short acting insulin which we're using. So for short acting insulin, I'll write here so that you follow with me. So this is short acting insulin. So examples here, we're gonna what call the Actrapid. It's a, the company name that we call it Actrapid. So what I'm gonna do this basically is that I'm gonna divide the 1500, so divided by the patient total daily uh, insulin requirements. Let's assume we've got a patient. This is patient X, okay, who has been on this insulin for some time, maybe a year, and now the patient was started on a lower dose, but now they are stabilized now on how many? On 40 units per day. So they're taking how many? 40 units, okay, which they're taking as this one, basal, which is what for uh, multiple injections. In this case, they're taking 10 units um, uh, at breakfast, okay, 10 units at lunch, and also 10 units at dinner, and then the other 10 units as what you call NPH at 23 hours. So this is NPH at 23 hours. So that's what they're getting there. So what basically we do is we're gonna get these total units that they get in 24 hours, which is 40 international units, okay? Divide by four, we're gonna put our 40 here. So when I divide this here, I'm simply gonna divide my 1500, divide by 40, which gives me what? This is give me 37 point. So let's use just 38 so that we just use a plus. So converting it to just making it 380 units. So what means this basically that for this patient, basically one unit of insulin for this patient reduces their sugar level by how many? By 380 milligrams per deciliter. So what we're going to do basically, we're going to convert this one into millimoles per liter by dividing by 18. I said by 18 here. So what I'm going to do is, mango is my 38. So 38 divided by 18 is giving me 2.111. So I'll use just 2.1. So what I'm getting here is basically 2.1 millimoles um, per liter of, that's what we found of this patient. So what it means basically here that for this patient that we have here, uh, one unit of insulin is able to reduce or to bring their sugar levels by 2.1 millimoles per liter. So if their sugar levels was, let's say, uh, 8.1, if they get one unit of insulin, it will reduce by what? To what? To 6. Okay, to 6. So that's what it means here. So mean that the sugar levels for this patient is being dropped by the factor about how many? 2.1 millimoles per liter. That's what one unit of insulin does for this patient. Now, coming last time, we stated that for the control of a diabetes patient, we said that we don't want to bring their sugar levels very low or to normal people because of the hypoglycemic aspect. So what we do is basically is our target goal of therapy or goal treatment is basically the sugar levels must be between 90 to 130 milligrams per deciliter. So I've done the transition or converted this one to millimoles per liter which is equal to 5 millimoles 
to 7.2 millimoles per liter as this is our target control. This is called fasting sugar levels. Fasting sugar levels or sugar blood sugar levels. This is a fasting. So before they eat, or if you get morning readings for their sugar levels in the morning, they must be in between this range 5 to 7.2 as their vertical target control. That is okay with them if they in this range. Now what we're going to do now, basically, now we're going to show you that this is going to be our normal as our target control. So how do you make this, what we call, individualized insulin sliding scale for short-acting insulin? How do you make that? Then what we come as, a, I'm going to put this one here as a normal range. So we put here uh, 90, so this is our reference range, to what? 130 here. And then we have our um, um, basically here. There's another one, of course. So here, basically, this is fasting. Then put fasting is five. This range gives for both their control target. This is our target range. The sugar levels must be here. So this is after meals. So at least we don't want to be more than uh, that. So it should be below that particular range. We don't want to be more. So this is what we have to follow. Our target control is that the sugar levels, most of them, when you get sugar levels for them, they must be in this range, 5 to 7.2. Let me just make that point that the sugar levels must be in this range. Okay? So when you're making a sliding scale for the patient, basically you want to know. Uh, their target control, their sugar levels. So two hours after meals, what than what? The other guidelines, of course, state that the sugar levels of the patient must be what? Uh, uh, the other guideline says eight. When it comes here, they put eight here. That is after two hours after meals. Children be exceeding eight. Others use ten. So others use that. So let's just use what we have here basically. So this will be the fasting side. So this is the average sugar control target for the patient. Whether they eat or they don't eat, the average target control cycle, they must be falling into this range. Okay, they must be in this range. So we can put an 8 here, too, okay? But there shouldn't be more 8 after they eat. They shouldn't be above 8 when they eat. Those are the best. They shouldn't be above 8 when up, after food. So they must be in this range of categories. So that's why we come up with the range so that this can be a bad square of monitoring the patient. Okay? So I think that's clear that point. I need to clarify that point. So this we're using one third has here, which is the same as what? We said the same as 5 minimums. Okay, 5 millimoles to what? By so using 7.2 here. Others they're using how many? Others they put 8 here. So let me just uh, put that point clear. So what you basically hear, we know that this patient, the factor here is 38 we're using here. So in this patient here, this is the dose, what correction dose that is required for the issue for the patient. So here, since it's a normal range here, as we say here, so here we add the dose here will be 0. We don't need to, uh, 0 units here. Okay? When you come here now, we're getting the one that one here. It comes 131 plus 38, which is a factor there. So 38 plus 31 becomes 161. So it becomes uh, plus 38 here. So we're just adding this one here. What we're adding is the 38, which we used, uh, plus 131. This is 169. So here we're going to have 169 here. Okay. So the minimum space time is the same thing. What we, I'm just going to get here 7.3 minimums plus. 2.1, which we're gonna get what? Uh, it's gonna get 9, 9.4, okay? Minimos per liter. So one, therefore, two, yeah, exactly. So we, we come again here, 170 here, plus 38, which is our our, our control party. So we're just gonna do 170 plus 38. This gives us 208. So 208 here. This is in the milligram per deciliter, as you said. So here we come again, we're getting the same one, 9 point what? 9.4 minimums per liter. We're adding, uh, again we're adding um, plus 2, plus 2.1, it gives us 11.5 here, minimums per liter. We come here, we get our 2, 0, 9, uh, plus 38 here, so 38. Plus 209, we get our 247 here, we got our 248 here. Let's add that 248, 248 plus 38 gives us 286, 287. We come with our 287, so then 287 plus uh, 38, which is our. That is 325. So for now, let's just edit here for now. We don't have to go beyond that. So we come here with our 11.6 minimums per liter. 
So we're adding just 2.1, which gives us what? So it's going to be 13. Uh, point seven here. We have what for our thirteen point eight uh, plus two points. So that's one. So that gives us fifteen. Fifteen here. Uh, point nine. Okay. Which we have got sixteen here. Yes, sixteen. Um, sixteen units plus that one's gonna be what? Um, that's eighteen point one. Let's just put that for now. So let me just show you now what that means basically. So as you can see here. Um, here we say it's in the normal range. So this is our assuming this is our target control for the patient who is diabetic. We want their sugar levels to be averaging in between this 90 to 130, which is the same as five minimums to 7.2. This is when you take their sugar levels all the time. Sugar levels must be in this range. So I said others they put eight, others put ten, must but less than ten. This is after two hours after they eat meals, the sugar levels should be less than ten. Should, uh, others put ten. Others put eight, the other guidelines, but this is a better control for the patient. Their sugar levels must be in this range all the time. Shouldn't be exceeding this range. That is, means the sugar, the, the drugs, the issue is working well for the patient. So, when it is in this range, we just added what the unit factor there in this case is said what in is 38. The patient, one unit drops their sugar levels by 38 mg per deciliter. So, in this case, the only need one, you only add one unit there. Here, is this you add how many two units here here three units here here four here five units here so what does that mean now that means if the patient sugar levels are in this range if a patient of course who is a diabetic patient who is getting this dose here that's what they're getting this dose total for the units and when they take the sugar levels in the morning the sugar levels are in this range let's say 9.4 uh let's say the sugar levels of 9.4 in the morning that means that that patient of course will require how many two more additional uh, units to their daily dose insulin. So instead of them getting 10 units which they use, use every day at breakfast, they're gonna get how many? 12 units. They will require 12 units to bring their sugar levels to this range, which is our target normal in this case here. Does that make sense? So I'll say it again. So if you have a patient that checks their sugar levels, and when you check the sugar levels is in this range, let's say 11.6, and let's say sugar levels in 11.7, uh, this patient, uh, that's their sugar level, this is high, this is very high. So what do that mean? That, that means that since we found that for this patient, their sensitivity test tells us that they need how many, uh, they need uh, one unit of insulin is able to reduce their sugar levels by 2.1 millimoles per liter in these units. So that means that thereby, within this range, they require how many, they require three additional units. So these additional units, this units you add them to the, their daily dose insulin so you're adding this one three plus what they are taking in the morning 10 so that gives how many uh, 13 so they'll inject themselves 13 units before breakfast to bring their sugar levels in the normal for them so this is how the sliding scale works for each patient that's how you make a sliding scale it's simply based on what you call insulin sensitivity test so this is how we what we had a video for you, a short video for you, just to make a summary of what how you can come up with a patient individualized insulin sliding scale for the short acting insulin. So if you have got any questions or comments, what you can do basically is simply comment on our video below, we'll respond to you. So next, we're looking forward to bringing new more exciting topics that are coming starting next week. So please follow us and remember to share our video with your friends. This is what we have and God bless you and stay safe. I need a pharmacist! Take the drama out of minor illnesses. For expert advice, consult your pharmacist.